Tar is directed by Todd Field and stars Kate Blanchett. I was really looking forward to this film because there was a lot of good word of mouth about this one. I thought the trailer looked great, and then I bought it the other day and I saw the runtime was two hours and 40 minutes, and I was like, wow. <laughs> That's a long movie. Because the type of film that it was, I did not expect it to be that length. And I watched it, and I think every single second of that 2 hours and 40 minutes was earned. I was gripped from the, from the beginning to this film to the end of this film. The best part about it is I can't necessarily tell you why it gripped me the way that it did. It's not like it moved lightning fast because it didn't. It moved at a very, very, very steady, slow... Pace. I almost want to say tempo. It moved, but it, it didn't have me bored. I wasn't bored at all. I felt like I genuinely watched a film from beginning to end. I know that sounds really dumb, but what I'm trying to say is that I felt fulfilled while watching it, feeling like I got what the trailer pro promised me. There's a lot of symbolism in this film, and yes, maybe some of it did go over my head. It's very easy to get the gist of this movie. I saw on Rotten Tomatoes the audience consensus was, oh, it might be a little confusing. I thought that's stupid. I think it's a very easy movie to follow, and it's just, its symbolism is a, maybe a little difficult to break down. The best part about this movie is how it's written and how it's performed by Cl Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett She's my pick for the Oscar now, without a doubt. I, it used to be Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere. This is the best female lead performance of the year. This is one of the best lead performances of the year. This is one of the best lead performances I've ever seen. The way that Kate Blanchett just completely embodies Lydia Tarr and becomes a completely different person from what I've seen in interviews. By her performance, if I never saw an interview with Kate Blanchett, I would think that she, she just acts that way because she is <laughs> that good in the movie. The way it's written is as if the camera isn't on her. You see a person like her do the dirty work. You see her do it. It's not implied. You see her do some horrible things and you're like, you're a horrible person. But not a lot of characters are written that way because everyone, everyone in the world has done something shady. Even if you're if you're two years old, if you're 90 years old, you have done something a little shady that no one knows about. And we see that with Kate Blanchett as Lydia Tart. You see everything that she does that's a little shady. That one thing that if somebody saw it, they would think you were a horrible person. I think everyone in the world has done one little thing. If someone saw them in that moment, they would think that they were a horrible person. And if you're saying, if you're looking, watching this video right now, telling me, oh, that's not true, you're lying to yourself because everyone has. And so the way that I feel like Todd, Todd Field had to open up and be honest while writing the script is a whole level of consciousness that a lot of writers just can't unlock. And I know I'm talking like, oh, this is like a really intelligent film. I'm talking like it's a really intelligent film because it is a really intelligent film. Every theme of this movie is felt. This movie tackles something in media all the time now. It's very, you know, polarizing this topic. Well, not necessarily polarizing. It's just, I'll, the best way I can describe it is the way cancel culture works. You see it strictly through a lens that isn't filtered by social media, the news, or anything like that. Because whenever you have a film cancel something like that, it's told by the social media and the news. This film completely takes that, flops it on its head. It's like, no, we're going to show you exactly why the news and social media is saying this. So you can really, it's almost up to your own interpretation. In the beginning of the movie, there is this one long conversation scene while Lydia Tarr is in a class and she's there speaking and she has this long, long debate with a student. And it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. They're talking about whether it's okay to honor artists from the past, even if they've done horrible things that were standard for things back then. They have a very long dialogue about that and it ends in a in the way that it ends. I don't want to get too much into it. It's such a smart dialogue. The way Kate Blanchett plays it, the way her character is written, it's just, it's a scene that I want to see in film class and broken down of why it works the way it does. And I, I feel like this film in general, it, it just feels so, so much quality and care has been put into this movie because it's a two hour, 38, mo 38 minute movie that is a slow burn a very, very simple script, but it just grabs you from beginning to end and every second of it is earned. And I know that in the, the screenplay, Todd Field wrote on either like the first or second page, this script, when you read it, you're gonna think, oh, this is gonna be like an hour and a half. But in order for me to do this movie justice, it needs to be about two and a half hours. I think that's just fascinating to be that sure of a vision. And that's 
what I love about this movie. It really feels like a director's vision. And obviously, in the day that where we're saturated in Marvel stuff, which yes, directors can have their vision on there. We've seen it. I think Sam Raimi does have some of his fingerprints on in Multiverse of Madness. To see a film like Tar, where you know for sure no studio interference is exactly the way it's meant to be. I hate comparing this movie to a movie that's completely different, but I have to. Tenet. Tenet is a movie that I love. It's like, I love Tenet. I think it's extremely underrated, and I think people just need to watch the movie again. That as well is a movie Nolan didn't have any screenings for that movie. He just showed it the way that he thought looks good to him and the producers. That's why it's one of my favorite Nolan movies. It's completely his vision, and you can tell, and it shows in the quality of the film. And that's an action movie, and so you can maybe, to general audiences, maybe they can feel it more. But at, but when you watch Tar, I feel that I had that feeling again. And I have a feeling that this movie... Initially, I would think it wouldn't hold up on a rewatch, and I might be a little bored. I have no doubt that I want to watch this movie again. I want to watch it again right away and just relish in the care that was put into every frame of this film because one scene in this movie where, ugh, I can't talk about it, but it's just so good. The best part about this film is, without a doubt, Kate Blanchett. I talked about her performance before, but she better get nominated for the Oscar, and I'm honestly hoping for her to win the Oscar at this point because she was just that good. Of course, yes, there are other characters in the movie, and all of them, good, they're passable. None of them live up to Kate Blanchett. Everyone could have been on their A game and been like on their best acting status, but I couldn't notice because Kate Blanchett was that good. It's just like, every time she speaks, you're just drawn to listen to every single word that she's saying. She has that intrigue that you want in a, in a lead of your film, and she brings that vibe that the script probably gave off when you're reading it and applies it perfectly well. I would love to see Kate Blanchett work with Todd Field again because I feel like they just have this click. As for problems with this movie, yes, 2 hours 38 minutes is a long time. Maybe you could have snipped out maybe 5 minutes at most. When I tell you that this is a director's vision, this is truly a director's vision. And there's no like big problems with it, and so I don't know why when I scored it, I gave it not I didn't give it a low score. I gave it a very high score compared to the other films I've seen this year. It's just I feel like maybe it should be higher, but it's the score that I gave it. So I'm gonna give Guitar a 9.1 out of 10. I kinda wanna give it higher, but when I look at the other movies that you know, I think when you get into the nine territory with me, it's just strictly on preference. And so the fact that it's not above certain movies, it's just I prefer those movies even though they might not technically be be better than this one. But yeah, Tar, excellent. If you're a cinephile, watch this. Without a doubt, I've been trying to tell like my cinema, my cinephile friends, watch this movie, please. It's so good, but they haven't gotten around to it yet. So that's why you guys are here. So you guys can comment down below what you guys thought of Tar because I am ecstatic to talk about this movie. I saw this movie days ago. I, mean, I think I might have saw this movie movie a week ago, and I'm still buzzing about it. I just saw The Fablemans today, <laughs> and I am still buzzing about Tar, which you know you can check out my Fablemans review. That's my most recent video before this one, and you can see what I thought about this movie. Still, spoiler alert for Fablemans review, still a really good movie, but I I will admit, I like this one more, so yeah. Anyways, comment down below what you guys thought of Tar, so like, share, subscribe, and stuff like that, and 